Mr. Nelson. You're the Nick Mew we've been talking about for the past seven days? Yes, sir. Nick, I want to right away talk to you about uh, exhibit number 104, if I could have the screen. You were on the Apple River on July 30th? Yes. I want to ask you about this exhibit, which says it's from frame 2592 at 149 into the video. Have you seen this before? Yes. Do you remember that time in your life when you were on the river in that position as shown in that photograph? Yes. Sometime after that, did something happen to you? Yes. Were you punched? Not, be, not after, before Sometime that. after this, were you After punched? that, yes. Okay. I want to talk about the time between this and the time that you get punched, okay? Okay. Um, exhibit number 104 there is on the, uh, with it. Where are you on that? I'm uh, <clears throat> standing in front of two, two ladies. In which, if you were going to just describe the symbol on exhibit 104 symbolizing you, which one is that? The one with the M. Okay. Do what color? The, do you want the Blue. irritator? Um, at that point in time, you said there's two people in front of you. Who are those two people in front of you? A blonde lady to my left and a red head, uh, a red hair lady to my right. Were there other, does this accurately reflect how you remember roughly people in general around you? Yes. The blonde lady in front and the uh, other woman, you understand now that through the trial that the, the blonde woman is named Madison Cohen? Yes. Can we use her name when possible? Yes. And the, uh, you said red-haired woman, her name's Riley Madison. Can we use her name when possible? Yes. Possible? So when Riley and Madison in, are standing in front of you at that point, just before you get punched, right, what are they doing? They're yelling at me. Uh, at one point, they were pointing downriver and saying, go, go, get away. Some ex what are they doing with their hands? They're touching me. When they're you say touching you, is that something gentle? No. They're pushing. Uh, so uh, Madison, she pushed against my left shoulder. She, she pushed against my chest. She was pointing her finger right at my face. She was yelling at me, very close to my face. Um, Riley had her left, had one of her arms, I believe it was left hand, on my right arm, squeezing and pushing me back. And you, when you just gave that description, you put your hands a uh, distance apart. Can you show us that again? How far away were they? About a foot. Okay. Less than a foot. You've something. heard it described through trial as in your personal space. Would you agree with that? <laughs> yes, right in my face I would describe When that was happening, what did it sound like to you? The volume was very, very high. Um, Let me ask you about how your body was responding in that moment when people are pushing you, poking at you, the volume is high. How's your heart? Did, could you tell us about what your heart rate was? Oh, yeah. Uh, my heart rate was getting really high. Um, my, my breathing was getting very high. I was... Uh, How about uh, your vision? Did, did you yeah. have normal vision in that moment? No. No. At that moment, uh, because of the situation, I was getting tunnel vision. And can you describe what you mean by you say in tunnel vision? I couldn't see peripheral vision, but I could see center and in, in right before my eyes. How about hearing? How was your, could you hear the noises? Uh, I could hear the volume very high, but I couldn't uh, understand what they were saying. There was, the noise became garbled. I mean, the, the sound became garbled. Did you feel threatened at that point? Uh, yes. Did you have your knife in your right hand? Yes. What did you do with your left hand? With Tell us what you did with your left hand. Yeah, I, uh, yeah with, so with, with my left hand, I uh, pushed her away from my face. Can you show us what you did with your left hand? Why'd you do that? 
She was very close to my face. She was in my personal space. She has been, had been there for a while, and uh, I felt threatened. Were you, did you intend to harm her in some way? No. Did you try to harm her in some way? Absolutely not. Do you know where, if at all, you had contact with her body when you raised your left hand in that manner? No. Do you think you had contact with her? No. Okay. I want to take us out of that space now for a second, okay, Nick? Okay. Um, if I could have the screen again. Um, you, you were here in court when we talked about, um, when we watched the video of you speaking with Brandy Hart, is that right? Yes. And I think you told her about your health condition. Can you just tell the jury now, what was your health like on July 30th of 2022? It was very poor. Okay. Yeah. Um, had you, I think you mentioned to her again, had quadruple bypass surgery before? Yes, sir. And how, when did you have that? Uh, 2020, about the same month. So about August. Showing you here what's been marked as exhibit number 108. Can you tell us what those are pictures of, starting just on the, on the left? Yep, on the left it's me um, right after the surgery um, holding a uh, red heart uh, pillow against my surgery. What was the purpose that you knew for that red heart pillow? That was to uh, protect my, uh, my uh, uh, surgery from hits, bumps. Was that something that the hospital provided? It looks like there's like almost a picture of heart and lungs on there. It is. Uh, the, the, the hospital provided that. And then the picture in the middle, what is that? My first walk. Um, my new life. Did it take you some time to recover and uh, be as active and mobile as you were before? Oh, yeah. Do you think you ever reach the same level of mobility and fitness that you were prior to the quadruple bypass? Never. Uh, what's the picture of you on the right there? <laughs> you can tell us. My baby. Okay. Um, is that a dog? Yeah. Is that dog important to you? He's my angel. Okay. And that's uh, the cushions helping you to enjoy time with her, but still keeping your chest safe? Yes, sir. Okay. You've had other surgeries in the past, is that right? Yes. Did you have a hernia surgery? Two hernia surgeries. Have you had back surgery? Yes. And again, in general, would you consider your fitness, on, if you were going to put it on a scale for July 30th, what would you consider your overall health and fitness on July 30th of 2022? With my weight, and very poor. I want to ask you now about moving on to the Apple River on July 30th, okay? Okay. On that, this, plan, this was a planned trip, is that right? Yes. Did you get a call from your friend Ernesto sometime before that trip? Yes, sir. What was that call about? He wanted to remind me to bring uh, my knife to cut string uh, when, when we tied the, the tubes together. Okay, when you say, do you have a pocket knife? Yes. Okay, can you tell us about that pocket knife? I owned it for about 10 years. I have it a lot on me. I uh, use it as a, basically a dual tool. Uh, I call it my uh, Swiss Army knife, uh, basically because it, I use it as a screwdriver. I cut insulation when I do electrical work. I, I, do it, I, I use it pretty much everywhere. Okay. I'm an engineer. My tool. Is it um, something that you've carried on your person, I don't want to say all the time, but somewhat routinely? Yeah. When I knew I was going to work on something or need it for something, yes. Okay. Now I want to skip ahead again now to, to the river, okay? At some point, did Ariel lose his phone? Yes, he did. Did you go to look for that phone? I volunteered to go look for it. When you went to go look for that phone, did you, what were you wearing? Before that? Nope, right when you, when you oh. left your group to go look for that phone, what were you wearing? So I took my goggles, my snorkel, and my swimming trunks. 
Did you have anything on your feet? Yes, I had on my feet. I had a pair of really, really torn up uh, uh, sandals. Can I approach, Judge? Yes. Showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 113. Is this a packet of nine photos of your sandals? Yes. You've seen those? Yes. Does that accurately show the condition of the sandals that you had? Yes. Can you just move to the admission of Exhibit 113? Any objection? I don't think I've seen them, Judge, if I can take a look at it. Yes. All right, 113 is received. These weren't taken by you, were they? Pictures, no. no these were taken by the Sheriff's Department, correct? Yes. Uh, permission to publish, Judge? Yes. Can I just, because we're going to go through the PowerPoint, can I pass Yeah, just them? pass them to the jury. Can you use your words? I know we have a picture that better does it, but just briefly describe the condition of those sandals. Horrible. Okay. They, they were... They were just coming apart. They, they, I couldn't walk on them unless I tried to mend them. Okay. Um, As you can see, I used string, leftover string to mend them. When you left wearing those sandals in your shorts, um, did you have your pocket knife with you? Yes. Where was it? In my right pocket, okay. clipped to my... Did you have that there pretty much all day? Yes. Um, you were here when we watched the video of your interview with Brandy Hart, is that right? Yes. Um, when you spoke with Brandy Hart, were you truthful to her about the knife? No. I lied about the knife. Was that your knife? Yes, it is. It did, was. Did you bring it with you uh, when you went to go uh, look for the phone? Yes, I did. When you went to go look for the phone, did you have any intent to harm anybody? No. Why did you go leave your group? Go look for the phone. Okay. At some point, did you have some contact with a, a group of uh, teenagers? Yes. Um, and you were here in court when we uh, saw the nine-second video. Is that right? Yes. I want to show you just a, a couple of slides from that, if I could. Do you, uh, do you see those slides up there? Yes. Are those from that video? Yes. What are you uh, doing in those three slides in general? I was scanning the water looking for the phone. Okay. And are you in that position, are you walking upriver or downriver? Upriver, away from, the, from that group of uh, boys. Did you hear them say some things to you? Yes. Prior to your walking upriver and them, uh, did you hear those words that I have written on that slide? Yes. Prior to your hearing those words when you were walking upriver, had you had verbal contact with that group? I think they, so. They asked me uh, what I was looking for, and I told them I'm, I'm uh, looking for a phone, a lost phone. Did you ever tell them that you were looking for little girls? No. Were you looking for little girls? Absolutely not. It's pathetic. Um, when you, at the end of this, when you, you watch the video, at the end of the video, where I'm not going to play it, but do you remember what you did right there at the end? At the end, I was walking away. Okay. Did you eventually turn around and face in the direction of the group that was yelling at you and calling you a raper? Yes. When you... Yes.
I'll sustain the objection. Uh, the question was leading. Please continue. What did you do at the end of the video? I, I was walking away. At some point, did you ever become in a position where you uh, were looking at that group of teenagers that had yelled at you? Yes. Um, what did you see when you were looking at that group of teenagers after the end of this video? I uh, saw them, I saw one of them holding a, a phone in a bag, um, and I believed it was what I was looking for, so I turned around and I started approaching them. Why did you approach them? I wanted to get a closer look at the phone to see if it was the one that, was, uh, that belonged to Ariel. Um, did you eventually get near them? Yes, I, uh, I, I started walking, then I uh, rushed the pace, uh, stumbled and fell on my knees, held on to their tube, um, at which point I lost my, my goggle and snorkel kit in the water. Do you, you saw in the video, or excuse me, you saw during your interview with Brandy Hart that you said things different than what you just said now about what happened to your snorkel and goggles. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I, yes. Is your memory sometimes different than what you see in the video? Yes. Okay. Was your memory, in your memory, what happened to your goggles? In my memory, the goggles got um, knocked away. Knocked away. Objection yeah. Leading. So, hold, got hold, hold one second. when there's an objection, just wait on your answer. Uh, it is leading. Sustained. Next question, please. It's a leading question. Let's move on. Um. <clears throat> is your memory perfect? Never. Um, now that you've watched the video, do you realize that you were wrong about that? Yes. Um, what happened to your goggles? My goggles uh, uh, fell in the water. When they fell in the water, what did you do? I started looking for them, searching right where they fell. Um, if I, oops, it's on already. Showing you here uh, some slides, 220, 225, and 279. Can you tell us what you're doing? I'm searching for the, the goggle kit. And where are you in relation to the six teenagers tubes are you on the side are you up river are you down river are you in some other position i'm up river so um yeah i'm okay. gonna then show you another group of slides 575 600 and 625 what does that show you doing all right so what i did from that point i went around the the inner tubes to the other side and i continued looking for the goggle and snorkel set why did you walk around from the one side to get to the other side of the tubes? <laughs> um, well, I, I, I thought that the water current, current would, uh, would, would bring him over to the other side, and I was walking away from the boys at the same time. Okay. Um, during that time that you walked in that direction, did you have any physical contact with them? No. Were you confronting them? No. Um, Didn't say a word. This next set of slides, um, what does this show you doing here? I'm walking away from, from the group. Still, Why? Go ahead. I'm, looking, I'm looking f still looking for my goggles at, the, at that time. When you were doing that, did you ever hear the kids say anything? They gave me a warning. What'd they say? You got 10 seconds. Uh, in response to that, what did you do? I ignored them, and I actually continued doing what I was doing. Okay. I can show you the next set of slides here. Um, were you in a position to see here 963, 1140, and 1155 what the teenagers were doing behind you? They were getting closer and closer to me. They were walking towards me. Were you in a position to see that? Was that behind you, or had you turned around? Uh, well, I could hear their voices. I could hear that they were getting closer. At some point, uh, um, I may have turned my head and witnessed that they're coming towards me. 
showing you 1170, 1213, and 1284. What do you, what's happening here? I'm, uh, I have basically, I am at an angle to them, but I could say I have my back at them, um, still scanning the water, and they were right behind me. They got that close, they, within seconds, they were right behind me. At some point, did you see other people from another group? Yes. What uh, did you see? Um, I saw uh, what I seemed to me at the time, uh, adults coming over from the other side of the river. And when you saw um, adults coming over from the other side of the river, what did you do? I uh, walked towards them. I walked towards this. The first one was a... Uh, a it was Madison. When you walked towards Madison, where were the six teenage boys that had been yelling at you? They were following me. Okay. Were you in their path as you walked across the river towards Madison? No. Did they have a peer, as far as you know, did they have a clear path down the river if they wanted? More than plenty. Can I? Showing you this next group of photos, um, what did you, what's going on here? So um, in this frame here, uh, the, left, uh, the, the first adult that came to me was Madison. She already had her finger pointing downriver and yelling at me and, and used some awkward words, ordering me to go down. We see your, it looks like you're doing something with your right hand. Do you remember? What are you doing with your right hand? Yep, I was uh, trying to explain to her what I'm looking for. When you tried to explain to her what you were looking for, did you get the impression she was listening to you? No, her voice was too loud to... What Madison had as an impression. Okay. Hold on, hold on, wait a second. Sustained. Speculation. I'm asking about his impression, so I'll rephrase, I'll just, did you get the impression that Madison Cohen was going to listen to your words? No. Why not? Because she was too loud, she never stopped to give me a chance to talk, and she kept pointing and ordering me to go down, down river. We've all heard the tape, but just to be, was she using polite language? Polite? No. Did you hear anyone saying anything behind you when you walked over to Madison Cohen? Yes, they're all calling me names. Okay. Showing you the next set of slides here, uh, 1776, 1840, and 1824. What are you doing uh, here in this set of slides? I'm turning my back uh, towards uh, Madison and the rest of the people. Why did you turn your back to Madison and the rest of the people? It felt to me like I couldn't have a conversation with her at that point. She was not listening. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to interact any further. Had you at that point found your snorkel or goggles? No. Had you at that point found the phone? No. Did you hear anybody saying anything while you stood there with their back to them? Oh yeah. What did you hear? They were still yelling, he's looking for uh, little girls. Were you looking for little girls? Absolutely not. When you heard them, did you consider that to be a lie? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Sustained. I asked, did you consider that to be a lie? I don't yes, think of course. Please. I don't think that's I, I sustain the objection. Please move on. When you heard that, did you consider it to be truthful or did you consider it to be untrue? <clears throat> untrue. And when you heard someone say an untruth about you, did that change how you were feeling? I uh, felt frustrated, I felt annoyed. They kept it, saying it over and over, so it annoyed me and frustrated me. And when you heard them say this untruth about you, did it appear to you as if the other group that had come over agreed with what these kid, the, the teenagers were yelling about you? Objection, leading, sustained. Did you think anybody in the other group was going to help you or listen to you when you were being called these names and accused of being a pedophile? Objection, leading, 
sustained. How did you feel? Well, I, I felt overwhelmed at that point. I felt still annoyed, frustrated. I felt like she wasn't listening. She was the adult I, I thought I was going to, to reason with or get help from. She didn't, obviously didn't even attempt to reprimand the children from yelling. Showing you another slide here. Um, some 1838, 1846, and 1865. Is that you? Yes. What are you doing? Judge, can we approach? Yes. Just one moment. Ready? Okay. Yes, sir. Let's continue. Showing you photos 1838, 1846, 1865. What are you doing in those? Uh, do you remember what you were doing? Yeah, I had my uh, back towards uh, the, the, the group of people. In the two photos there, which direction are you looking? I'm looking downriver. Are you looking at, uh, there's two different groups, if I recall, from exhibit 104, is that right? Yes. One came from one side of the river and the other one's on the other side of the river. Correct. Which, where are you, in the photo on the upper left, are you looking at one particular group as opposed to another group? Yes, I'm looking at the, the boys group. And why are you looking at the boys group? Because they were yelling at me. And what were they yelling at you? They were yelling things that were not true and pointing at me. When this, I want to, after that happened, showing you the next group of slides, 1875, 1883, and 1889, do you remember what Madison did, if anything, to you? Yeah. What she, did she do? <clears throat> she grabbed my right arm and she pulled me towards her and I lost my balance, so I moved towards her. Did you consider that in that circumstance to be a gentle or a gracious touch? No. That was not a gracious touch. No, not at all. 
Had she been using any gentle or gracious words with you? Not that, no, not that I remember. Um, in those photos, can we see the footwear that you were wearing on that day? Yep, those sandals that we saw earlier. Did you have confidence in your footing in that area with those sandals? Objection leading. Sustained. How did you feel about your footing in that area? Very unstable. I uh, want to show you the next set of slides here. Uh, do you remember uh, what you say to Madison after she um, pulled on your right arm? Yeah, I told her not to touch me. And why did you tell her that? Because she pulled on me without my, uh, my invitation. Um, were you, did you say that in any particular tone? No, not in a mean tone, but I, I made it sound so she could hear me. Don't touch me. Okay. Why didn't you want her to touch you? I didn't give her permission to do so. Sure, but why did you not want to give her permission to do so? Because she was one mind, one track mind. She just wanted to get me away from that, point me down river and tell me to go there. What's your comfort level at this point? Um, <clears throat> on a scale from uh, one to, to 10, comfort level is very low. Okay. Are you, um, if you had that same thing, a scale of like a fear scale, a one to 10 fear scale, right? And yeah. so with 10 being the most fearful you've ever been in your life and, and zero, let's call zero to 10, being the most safe you've ever felt. Mm -hmm. Where are you at here on a fear scale? In that particular? Uh, yeah. About one. Okay. So you're more uncomfortable but not necessarily afraid, is that what I understand? Correct. At, um, where was your group in relation to you then? Was upriver. And did you do anything in order uh, in relation to your group? Yep. What did I, you do? I, I turned to them and I, I uh, called them. I was trying to call them to, to come over and help me. Is, are these slides, does this 2127, 2140, 2131, what does that show you doing? I was waving at them and calling them to, to come over. When you say you were calling them, did you do something physical or did you do something verbal or did you do both? Physical. Did you make any verbal comments at that point? No. Why not? It was very loud. All around me was very loud. I don't think that anybody could have heard me a hundred and some feet away. With everybody else yelling, did you think your yelling was going to de-escalate or escalate the situation? Uh, when everybody's uh, 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 raising their voice, I don't think having another raised voice would help the situation. Um, after you raised your hand to call for your friends, did you see Madison Cohn doing anything? Oh yeah, she was uh, looking at towards her group and then she waved to them to come over to, uh, to her. Did, is that what we're seeing here in 2261, 2262, and 2263? What do you see? Yep, she's calling her, uh, her group over. Did you remember when she called her group over, did her group respond? Yes. Where, did they join that? Yes. Showing you now these slides, is that what you saw? Yes. Um, I think we saw, asked you questions before about Exhibit 104 with you with the blue dot and the other red dots. When you were, did, did eventually, did, were you standing there? Were other people around you? Yes. When you were standing there in that moment with the other people around you after you've called your friends once, was that other group, did they appear to be afraid to you? Afraid from me? Afraid. Did they appear? When you look at them, do they look like they're in fear? No, absolutely What does it look not. like to you? They're all laughing and enjoying themselves. At whose expense? At my expense. And... Wait, wait. Speculation as to what these other... Sustained. Speculation as to what other people think. Next question. How did you feel in that moment when they were around you saying those things? Did you think they wanted you to join in their laughter? No. I, Did you want to join in their laughter? No, absolutely not. It was Where, not. Uh, if this fear scale is going, is it staying at one or is it moving in a particular direction? It's creeping up. 
Um, showing you another set of slides here, 2328, 2311, 2382. Uh, do you remember uh, what do you remember about that? I remember uh, the young boys were, uh, were yelling, uh, pointing at me, uh, saying things that are not true. Um, did you, were you able to see, like in this next slide, this 2429, 2440, 2401, were you able to see as you stood there what everybody was doing and were you able to scan and see that for a brief second yes okay. they were very close they were really close to me i could i could see and hear them how yeah. about your fear scale there where where is it where is it about two or three okay i see in the one on the right there you have your hand someplace can you tell me what you're doing with your right hand yes i'm uh, uh reaching for my pocket knife why because uh, at one point my uh, fear was getting really high and okay. I, I, I was getting ready to pull it out. Okay. Um, do you remember, other than what you've talked about, Madison Cohen pulling you, which we saw, do you remember anybody else touching, pushing, grabbing you in any way? Uh, the, the two ladies, yeah. yeah. Do you Madison. Showing you here what's 2472, 2478, 2481. Do you remember what's happening in those photos? Yes, yes. Um, this one, the lady on my right side, she, uh, she grabbed my, my arm and she was pushing against my, uh, my arm. And did that increase your level of comfort or increase your level of fear or something different? So it decreased my level, uh, the level of comfort and increased my, uh, my fear. Do you know, do you remember, at some point, do you take your knife out of your pocket? Yes, I, I do. Do you know when that is in relation to these slides? Do you have a memory exactly of when that is? Not exactly, but when they were pushing and, and poking at me, I remember I pulled it out then. Okay. Do you remember, did you have it out before you were punched or after you were punched? before I was punched. Okay. Showing you another set of slides here. It looks like you're, do you remember doing something with your left hand? Yeah, at that moment I really needed my, my people to come over and, and help me, so I was uh, trying to get their attention. Um, one more slide here. Do you, um, What's happening here in this slide? Uh, Madison is pushing on my left shoulder and basically yelling at me right in my face. And then on the next slide, we see something in your hand. Is that right? That's a knife. Um, Why did you take out your knife at that point? I was beginning to be afraid. And what was it about that moment where everybody is that made you so fearful that you took out your knife? I was surrounded. They, uh, they were yelling. They, were, they had just pushed me, um, well, the lady. They, they squeezed my arm. I mean, it seemed like they were not backing away. Um, previously, you turned around. Is that right? Yes. Did you feel comfortable turning around in this situation? No. Why not? They're too close to, to me. What happened the last time that you turned around? Nothing good. Um, Judge, this is a good place to break. Me as well be. All right, it's 12 noon. Let's break for lunch. Um, you'll be taken downstairs to the assembly room again. Uh, please, no conversation about the case amongst yourselves or with anybody else. Do not conduct any independent research or investigation. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, do not uh, use your devices to access any news reports or social media accounts about this trial. Uh, please take the jury out. All right, move the jury. Mr. Nelson. Thank you. Can I have the screen? 
Mr. Mew, when we finished, I think we were getting to the chronological space that we had begun the morning on, and so I want to start from there again and then move forward from there. Does that make sense? Yes. When I had asked you before, you talked about how you felt, but since that time, you've told the jury that you had this fear scale, okay? Mm -hmm. So at, I want to ask you about, at this time, what we see here, what you've previously described the scene, right? Mm -hmm. How were you feeling on the fear scale? About the six, seven. Okay. And at some point, I think you told them before, but just so we can put it into the context here, did you do something in response to something that was done to you when you're standing there in this moment? Yes. Uh, after uh, um, I was pushed, and, and both sides, I would say, you know, squeezed, I... Um, I was afraid, so I pulled out my knife. Okay. Did you do something with your left hand at some point? Yes, I did. What did you do with your left hand? I pushed her away. I when pushed you Madison you Pushed away. Madison away. When you, was the purpose in that to have contact with her and to get her to back up? Yes. Did you have a purpose to cause her pain? No. Were you trying to hurt her? No. What were you trying to do? I was trying to push her away from my space. She was right in my space, in my face. Could you, why didn't you just back up? I couldn't back up at that moment. Okay, when you say you couldn't back up, did, why not? Because you felt uncomfortable or were you? Objection leading. Be, because I would have oh, had wait, 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 there's an objection. Sustained on leading, next question. It wasn't done with it. Were you uncomfortable or was there a wall behind you or was there some other reason? Why did you feel like you couldn't back up? I didn't feel, uh, feel uh, safe turning my back on, on those people. Okay. How about just did, taking a step backwards? Well, I was standing my ground. I didn't move towards anybody. Okay. They were coming at me. When, they, when you <laughs> raised your left hand and you did that, do you recall when you pushed her away having contact with her? I may have, yes. Okay. Do you remember in particular where, if at all, you touched her? No. Okay. Would it surprise you if you touched her? No. Was that, in fact, your purpose in pushing her away? Absolutely. Okay. She was in my space. I want to move forward here. At, and you can turn the slide off, I guess. At, after you did that, right, did you, did something happen to you? Yeah. Did people do something to you? Yeah. What uh, was done to you? Yeah, almost right away I got uh, punched. Okay. And, and fell in the water. Where did you get punched? On my face, on my side of the head. Now, you've had a chance to watch this video, correct? Yes. Have you had a chance to see these 4,800 slides? Yes. Prior to seeing that, did you remember everything? No. Have the video or the slides help you to refresh your memory in some way? A lot. Have you remembered everything because you've seen that? Not everything, no. Okay. Do you remember something different than what you see in the video? No. You don't no. remember any of the things different than that you see in the video, like you talked about the goggles? Objection yeah. leading. Overruled. We're just trying to reorient the witness to a place where <clears throat> examination can continue. Are there some times when your memory is different from what the video is? Yes, of course. Okay. Now, this series that I want to show you is about things that were done to you, okay? Yes. Do you have a specific memory about everything that was done to you? No. Do you have a specific memory about everything that you did in response to what was done to you? No. Do you have a memory about how you felt in those moments? I would say yes, I do. Um, do you have a memory of what you believed in those moments based upon those feelings? Of course. So I want to show you the, the slide here. Again, this is slide 2661, 2662, and 2681. That's fine. Do you remember how you felt when you fell back into the water? I was, uh, number one, I was stunned. 
uh, that's why I, I, I uh, fell backwards. I was very afraid, of course. On this fear scale that you've talked about before, where are you on that scale from zero to 10? Right at the top, 10. Have you ever been at that 10 before in your life? Never been in a situation like this or a fight in my life. Have you ever been at a 10? Never. Um, when you did that, as we see on the right, what happened to your head? Oh, um, well, I uh, fell in the water. Obviously, that's a river, and uh, I hit my head on, uh, on river rock, and uh, my whole body went under, well, okay. my head went underwater. When you say your head went under, is that what it felt like? Yes. Did you feel water come over your face? Objection. Over my entire body, Hold on. Yes. Hold on. What's the objection? Bleeding. Sustained. Where did you feel the water on your body? Over my face, my, my mouth. Okay. I felt like I was submerged in water at the moment. Did you try to get up? Yes. Why did you want to get up? Why didn't you just lay down there peacefully in the water? To drown? No, I wouldn't want to do that. I wanted to get up out of the water. At that moment when you're down in the water, had anybody like A.J. Martin come up to you and said, just lay there and rest? Uh, somebody came from behind, yes. I found out later who he was and okay. pushed me down and to keep me in the water. Before that, when you tried to get up, do you remember feeling anything before that? Did you, you told the... Yeah. Uh, did you feel anything to any part of your head? Yes, of course. What did you feel? Felt uh, punched in the, in the head. Showing you the next slides, is that 2701, 2705, 2706? What's happening to you there? I, I'm getting hit. On, on the head. How many times at that point, is your memory of watching the video and your memory of experiencing this, have you been hit in the head now, but either by people or by the ground or by the water? Four times at least. Okay. At this point in time, where's your fear scale? A 10. When this happened to you, did you immediately get up or did you fall back in the water or did something else happen? I tried getting up, but I couldn't. Did you, at some point, did you feel something on your backside? There was somebody pushing me down. And when you felt that on your backside, did you feel anything else anywhere else? I got hit in the face, in the front of my head. And is that um, exhibit here, 2147, do you see that hand through the underarm there? Yes. Do you remember getting hit in the head there? Yes. Was that a gentle hit? No. When you're getting hit in the head here again, where are you at on the fear scale at that point? Ten. Have you been able to get up out of the water? No. How many people do you know? How many people are attacking you? At the time, I didn't know, but I, I knew there were more than I could handle. Did it feel like it was? How many did, people did it feel like? Like ten. Okay. You've seen the video and you responded at some point, is that right? Yes. And you used your knife in response? Yes. Why do you use your knife? I feared for my life. Did you think you could get out of there without using your knife? I couldn't even get up. You're pushing me down. No, so the answer is no. In that time when you're down on the ground, did you think there was a way for you to escape? No. Did you feel like you could just crawl away or run away or walk away or do anything else to escape? Not in that position. The next day after this, July 31st, were you in the, uh, did you feel, how did your body feel the next day? I hurt everywhere. My head hurt, my throat hurt, uh, obviously my back hurt. I hurt everywhere. You said your throat hurt. Is that something you remembered that day before when you were speaking with Brandy Hart? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yes. Did you mention it to Brandy Hart? I don't remember. Okay. 
have, did, did you see anything, when you felt the pain about your throat, did you see anything that refreshed your memory about what caused that pain to your throat? After watching the video, yes. Okay. What happened? I got hit in the, in the throat. Do you remember that now? Yes. If I can. Showing you the slides 2993, 2994, and 2997. Is that you? Yes. What's happening to you there? Somebody is going for my throat, squeezing my throat. Do you remember how that felt? I felt pain. I couldn't breathe. Scared, afraid. And showing you the next set of slides here, 2998, 99, and 3000. What did you think was going to happen to you in that moment? The whole time I, I, I felt like I was going to die, so he, I, basically I feared for my life. And in response to that, here's slide 3000. Did you do something in response to that? I reached out and, uh, and stabbed him. When you used your knife, and again, this is open-ended. You can ask it any way you want. Did you, were you trying to kill somebody? Absolutely not. Um, what were you trying to do? I was just trying to defend myself. After this was, again, we've seen the video, you talk to investigator Hart. So I want to ask you a little bit about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you independently, well, let me say, you've watched the video here in court, correct? Yes. And you watched the video prior to that. We've watched it together, right? Yes. Does watching that video refresh your memory? Do you have an independent memory of that conversation with investigator Hart? No. Do you remember what it is you said other than seeing things on the video? Other than uh, I lied about the knife, uh, that's what I remember, you know, after, yeah, I lied about the knife. Do you remember actually saying that in that moment, or you just remember seeing that and that's what you remember seeing? I remember seeing it in the video. Okay. Do you remember how you were feeling during that time at all? Do you have any memory about that? Not much. Okay. Just one other thing out of the timeline here. Since that time, have you, we've heard testimony, you have a twin brother. Yes. Is he here in the courtroom? Yes. Objection relevance, Your Honor. I overruled. You may continue. Just briefly, because I want to ask you about conversations that you may have had with your twin brother. Just briefly. How do you feel about your twin brother? I love him. Objection. That's irrelevant, Your Honor. It overruled. During this time, have you had conversations with your twin brother? Yes. Do you consider there to be anybody that you're really, maybe your wife, anybody you're closer to than your twin brother? No. The, you and your twin brother, when you speak, what language do you speak in? Romanian. Why do you speak in Romanian with your twin brother? It's the easiest way to find words to describe what we're thinking. Okay. Is that where you grew up? That's the first language. Um, are there times when you've spoke with your brother that you've talked about this what happened to you on the river? Yes. Is your memory about what you did or what was done to you, is it any better when you talk to your brother than it is when you talk about other times? No. Are you always getting it right? No. How about your feelings, your memory about your feelings? Mm -hmm. Do you get those right? Yes, okay. but almost all the time, I, the feeling is imprinted in my, my, my heart, my soul, my mind. Let me, just for a moment, I'll bring us back to the river on July 30th, okay? Mm -hmm. At some, uh, I think you'd said on the video and maybe you testified that people attacked you, is that right? Correct. At some point, did people stop attacking you? No. At some point, did people stop attacking you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. When people stopped attacking you, what did you do? I walk away. Okay. Why didn't you stay? Oh, God. Uh, 
I, I walked away towards my group where it was safe. I was afraid of the people that I just had contact with. When you're walking away, where, and you've talked about this fear scale. Where are you on the fear scale? Does it just go down right to zero? Does it stay at 10? Does something else happen? No, as soon as I saw the, the people I trusted, my peer uh, level started creeping down. When you say creeping down, when you're walking back, can you give us a, a, a where are you on that scale? As I was getting closer to my group, the fear factor is going lower and lower. But when you first start walking back, what's the number of About eight. When you get back to the tubes, what's the number level? About four, okay. five. At, I think we didn't talk about it. We've talked a little bit about your body response during this mm -hmm. brief time. When you start walking back, how's your body responding to you? I had cramps. I uh, felt like I lost, I, I had diarrhea, so I felt like I lost my bowel. Was that, Which I did. When, was that when you were walking back, or was that when you were in that 10 seconds <laughs> of things happening to you and you responding? I was when, when the, the action was going on, in the 10 second frame. You got diarrhea? Yes. Um, when you were walking back, uh, what else is your body? What are you feeling with your body? Well, heartbeat is getting, uh, when I'm walking back, the heartbeat was very, very high. Now it's going down a little bit, breathing, you know, that's what I remember. Remember, I, I was super, super stressed. How about your head? As you're going back, is your head clear? Is your head in a different state? How can you describe no. like what's going on in your head? My head was in a fog. It was like thick fog. I, I couldn't think, I couldn't realize what, what, what I've been through. Were you trying to make sense of it? I was trying, but there was no sense to be made. I was completely confused and in a fog. And when you walked away, you had the knife in your hand, is that right? Yep. When you got to your group, did you still have the knife? No. What happened to the, to the knife? Uh, I, on the way back, I tossed it on the, on the bank. And you just made with your right hand kind of an underhand motion yep. with your right hand from you know, at your side, raising up to maybe level with you. Is that fair representation of what you were describing? Correct. Why did you toss the knife? I don't know. I was afraid. I felt like I had to throw it away. What were you afraid of at that point? I was overwhelmed with, with just fear, you know, residual feel, fear. And I didn't want to have anything to do with that. OK. We've heard testimony that eventually you get back to the tubes. Does that happen? Yeah. Do you, where's your memory about that? Right now as you sit here, because we don't have a video about that, we don't have photos of that, is there, what's your memory like about that? It's barely remember anything. Okay. Do you remember talking to people? I remember people trying to talk to me, but I don't know, I don't remember what I said. Okay. You've heard some testimony about things that you might have said. Are you denying you said any of those things? No. Do you know what you said? After watching the video, yes. Oh, okay. The video isn't of, of I'm confused. Would you, the tubes, there's no video of you at the tubes. When you say... Oh, uh, after, well, after... Were you talking about was, Brandy Hart statements? Yes, yes. Okay. About what you said to the people at the tubes. Do you have any memory of that? No. no. Okay. When you're sitting there at the tubes, how are you feeling in your head? You talked about this fog, right? If you could put that on a scale, where is that? I still couldn't, my, my head was in a thick cloud. I couldn't understand what, what just happened. Still trying to process everything. I was overwhelmed. Did you think at any point you were just casual about what had happened? No. Did this feel casual to you in any way? No. 
at some point, uh, you saw the video here. You had contact with the police, is that right? Yes. Um, you uh, had sat in the back of a squad car of the Sheriff Knutson, is that right? Yes. Do you remember much of anything about that? No. Do you remember, you've seen some of the videos today. Can you tell us what do you remember? Nothing. Okay. Nothing at all? How about a feeling? Do you remember a feeling at all? Yeah, I was very, still very afraid. Okay. When you say very afraid, what were you afraid of at that point? Well, I've just seen, I've been through a horror situation, but uh, in their presence, I wasn't that afraid, but I was stunned. I don't remember much about it. Do you remember watching the video here in court when the police were talking about a guy with the bat? Oh, yeah. Do you remember anything about that? Uh, a little bit. Do you remember how, you, how that made you feel? Oh, yeah. I, I, I felt very afraid of him. Very afraid. We watched the video of you with um, Sheriff Knutson. That was about 23 seconds long. Do you remember that? Yeah. Have you watched a longer portion of that video with your attorneys? I don't remember. Okay. Do you remember saying more things to Sheriff Knutson after that? I don't remember. Okay. That's fine. Um, we saw a video here about your uh, being arrested and told that you were arrested for homicide. Did you remember that? After watching the video, memory came back, but I don't remember that. Okay. Not sure. When you when you're talking with either, at some point you go and you meet with Investigator Hart. Is that right? Yeah. When they were talking about homicides and injuries, can you tell me what you were, what's your mindset? Did that make sense to you? Did you understand that? No. I, 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 I couldn't make any sense of it, anything that she was telling me. I, I just couldn't make sense of it. Okay. Plus, I don't remember the, the, the meeting with her. Okay. Right now, as you sit here, you're like, I don't remember that. Right. The feelings, now some of the times that you talk with Brandy Hart, you talk about what you saw happening or heard happening or what you did. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. Do you I, get all of that right? No. Your feelings, when you were talking about your feelings about, and how you believed in your fear. Yeah. I, 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 I feared for my life. That's one thing I can't deny. I, I, that's embedded in my head forever. I feared for my life. I know that. I have nightmares about it. You, you've talked to, or yeah, tell us about those nightmares. I have them every night. What, is, what happens in those nightmares? Objection, Your Honor. This point is irrelevant. It's, it's, his nightmares are irrelevant. The fact that he had them, maybe, but not the content. Uh, okay. no. Can I approach? Yes. yes.
Nick, I want to ask you some questions about those nightmares, okay? Just to put it in just this tight little box, of, okay? You've had nightmares? Yes. And the nightmares have been about what happened to you on the Apple River when you were attacked? Correct. And the nightmares are essentially a replaying of what it is that happened. Agreed? Correct. And when you have those nightmares, your body responds. Objection, Your Honor, please approach. Yes. Let's continue. Nick, those nightmares that you've had about what happened on July 30th, have you sought medical treatment for that? Yes. Just a couple of, I want to just make sure we check a couple of legal boxes, okay? Mm -hmm. When you used the knife, did you believe you were under attack? Yes. Why? Because they, at that point, they've, they've already been pushing and tugging and... When you shopping. used the knife, had they done anything more than pushing or tugging? Did they you... They punched me, they, they, they pushed me down, they, they, they threw me in the water, I hit my head, yes, so... When you decided to use your knife, were you using it to prevent an attack or stop the attack that was happening? To defend myself. Um, did you believe you needed to use that knife? Absolutely. In that moment in time, again, as you've described it, they've pushed you down into the water, and you've been punched. That's the moment of time I want to ask you about, okay? Yeah. In that moment of time when you were down in the water, did you believe you could escape? No. What do you believe would have happened to you had you not used your knife? I would have died. I believe I would have been killed that day. Why do you? That's specific time. Why'd you use your knife? To defend myself. Those are the only questions I have, Judge. It's just messed up. I can approach, Judge. 